This is code.org. I'm currently working on their CS Discoveries course, and I'm working on Unit 3, which is Animation and Games, Lesson 12, Keyboard Input, Part 9. Changing images as you move. Right now, your conditionals only do one thing, change your sprites X or Y, but you can actually put as much code as you want inside a conditional. A common thing to do in games is to change your character's image depending on which direction you are walking. Alright, so don't let this word conditional scare you. They've been using it a lot lately. Remember, conditionals are there if are those if statements where you check or you ask if something is happening, okay? And we'll get into that in just a moment. So let's see. This icon means that this level is part of a larger project, alright? Changes will be saved across these levels. Oh, cool. Okay, so we're slowly going to be building something bigger. I'm going to hit X. Do this. Using the provided program and images, duplicate your chosen bug four times. Alright. Edit each of your images to point in one of the four directions. One of the four. Okay, I guess up, down, left, right. Um, but we'll check the images. Write code that uses sprite dot set animation. All right. So this is our sprite object dot set animation is a going to be a method, I guess. We'll get into that to change the image on your bug sprite when different arrow keys are pressed. Oh, cool. All right. So I'm going to minimize the instructions for now. Quick reminders. These are our toolbox. This is the code we can use. Bunch of bunch of options. Workspace is where we're going to put that code. Let's go ahead and hit run. I want to see what all of this stuff does. Um, oh, do they already have? Oh, yes. So we have some of this code that we added. Okay. Uh, down, up. Okay. So it's very common in games, like they already said, to have animation change when your character is moving in a particular direction, especially like side scroller type of games. Um, and they often call it a costume change to have your sprites animation change. Let's look at the animations tab and see, oh my gosh, we have more bugs we can choose. Ooh, I think I want the B. Okay, so let's go with, well, let's look at our options. Yeah, not my favorite. Okay, a B. And if I click, oh no, that's the pen size. Zoom in and out. Somewhere stored in here is another animation. Or what they mean is just these other animations. I am not certain, so let's start testing things out. Let's go to the code. Um, this icon means, yep, you've read that. So, uh, the conditional for this one, this is our draw function. Remember, the draw function repeats constantly. And what I mean by that is everything within this code is going to be run and then when it gets to the bottom of the green it goes all the way back to the top and runs it again and again and again and remember with the background set to white at the top that is where it blinks the screen and then it draws the animation wherever we have instructed it to the conditionals are here if key down right if key down left if key down up if key down down so each time the computer says okay if the key down it if the key right is down, zoop, it drops into the code and it would run bug.x equals bug.x plus 2. And that's because the x and the y graph. So x is left to right. Let me hit show grid. So x 0 is way over here. x 400 is way over here. y 0 is not there. That's y 400. y 0 is way up here. 0 0 is here. So if we add 2 to x, that would be this way, which makes sense because if we click right, that would mean our animation moves right. If we click left and we're taking 2 away from x, well, where does x go down? Going this way, which is left. Um, if we click up, bug.y, if we subtract 2 from y, that would make sense. It's going to be going this way and adding 2 to y this way. And then we repeat. Oh, well, and then we draw the animation at the very bottom. Once we set the new location, we draw it. And remember, this happens 30, 50 times a second, so instantaneously almost. And then it hits the bottom, goes back to the top, wipes out that image, and moves it slightly more, and checks, well, depending on what key you have pressed, moves it slightly more, and draws it again. So, 
let's again what they are wanting us to do is we're going to be changing write code that uses sprite set animation to change the image of your bug sprite when different error keys are pressed edit each of your images to point in one of the four directions okay write code that uses sprite set animation to change the image on your bug sprite when different error keys are pressed okay so keep in mind it is asking us to do two things then duplicate your code bug image four times your chosen bug image four times okay edit each of your images to point in one of the four directions write code that changes the sprite set animation so they're wanting us to do two separate things duplicate and then add the code all right so keep in mind if you're not seeing all of this code you need to go back and do the other portions of lesson 12. we wrote this code earlier so if you don't have this it's because you haven't done that part yet so first off we're going to go to animation now i like the b for sure so i'm getting rid of mr fly bye bye and mr ladybug because miss b is perfect and i'm going to copy or duplicate it four times once twice and three times this one i'm going to name b left okay because that b is facing the left i'm going to name this one b right and now i need to flip our b to the right i'll do that in a second this is going to be b up and this is going to be b down all right now we have to start moving them b to the right hmm how can we do that aha flip vertically let's see what this does do i have to select it first we'll find it out oh wow that was much easier than i thought now our b is facing the right perfect now let's go to b up and what did this say flip vertically apply to all frames no is there a flip horizontally what's this do rotate Ooh, let's try that Ooh. oh well that is b no that's b up i would say right the b is now facing up sounds good to me and now we want our b to face down nope 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 b facing uh that's not really down yeah that's the same as this all right well, maybe oh 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 um that's b facing up is this b facing eh. i guess the eyes of the b are down Yep, that's B facing down because its head is pointed down. So let me, oops. Oh, okay. So that would be B, got it. That's B facing down. I don't think this is B facing up. I think that's B facing upside down. I think that's B facing up. Left, right, yep. Notice how each is different. That's facing up. Look at the eyes. And then that's facing down. Our B's, yep. All right, great. So we got that part. Go back to our code. I'm going to shrink our directions. And now we need to be changing the sprite. I can tell you right off the bat, I don't want this to be Ladybug. I'm going to have this be um, facing the original direction, okay, which was B facing to the left. So now I want to add this same thing, bug set animation. So I'm going to go to sprites, sprite set animation, and make sure you're putting this inside the if. Because I only want to change the animation if the B is facing a new direction. If I put it down here, the B's animation would automatically change no matter what. It wouldn't matter if. So, if facing, if we keep the arrow, the, if we press right arrow, we want the B to be facing to the right. Make sure to change sprite to, well, B. Because we made a, nope. To bug because we made a bug variable not a sprite variable all right and then we set the animation to be left be right now for left we are going to use another set animation 
because once we change the animation to right or to up or to whatever by pressing an arrow key, it doesn't change back until we hit the arrow key. Because this original set animation is outside of our draw function, and everything in our draw function repeats over and over again. So once we change the property for the bees animation, we do not we do not have it change back unless we press a different key. So we do want left here as well. Let's go ahead and change this to up. And then finally under down sprite and down. Make sure to change these all to the variable name, which was bug for me. And I'm going to get rid of these comments. Those were from a previous level, right? Comments are for programmers. The program doesn't need them to run. They were just to help us out. Um, and that kind of shortens my code. Right. So let's go ahead and test this out and see uh, debugging wise <laughs> if I made any mistakes. Let's hit run. Okay. I'm going to go to the right. And the B changed up. And B is facing up, down. B is facing down and left. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that, our magical flying bee. Let's double check that we fulfilled all the instructions. Added each image to point in one of the four directions. Yep, write code that uses sprite set animation. Yep, um, awesome. This is really fun and it's gonna be useful as we start making our own game in later lessons of the course. Great, I guess on to lesson 13. And just one more time, here is the code that was working for me. Awesome. Let's keep going. All right. Make sure your code's correct, okay? You cannot edit your project after submitting it really submit it and as a teacher my students sometimes hit submit way too so soon and they think this is kidding nope i'm not going to be able to edit it thankfully we got it right i'm going to hit submit and on to 13. 